Hello everyone, this is the Undying Nephilim, and in this video I am going to show you guys the heroes for the Dark Nuts and the Moblins, as well as the units that each of the heroes get, and the awesome titans that both of these factions have. Two of the coolest titans in the game right now. <laughs> anyway, so I guess I will start with the Moblins. Um, even though I'm not a huge fan of the Moblins, I do like some of their heroes and the units that their heroes get. I very much like the Dark Nuts more, but we'll go ahead and start with the man Ganon himself. <laughs> he is the first hero that the Moblins can pick from, and as a hero unit himself, he's, <laughs> he's pretty big. Uh, obviously his designs based off of his original designs from the older Zelda games um, from particularly the first three um, for um, most people that play this mod probably realize this by now but just to, uh, I guess to clarify for newcomers I actually in my canon I consider Ganon and Ganondorf two completely different individuals they end up becoming linked later on in the storyline, but uh, Ganondorf is the Gerudo man, who is the emperor of the Gerudo, and Ganon is the giant blue moblin, who kind of unites all the different blin races together. And he's got his awesome Zuna trident that he uses to stab people. Because he's got a pole arm, he's actually got an anti-cavalry bonus too, so he's actually good against horses and other cavalry units. So yeah, that's Ganon. Probably uh, my second favorite hero that you can pick as the uh, as the Moblins, although I don't particularly care too much for his hero unit, which I guess I'll uh, go ahead and describe now. His hero unit is the... it's If you've played Breath of the Wild, it's the Hinox from Breath of the Wild, but since I already have a Hinox for the Moblins, which is based off of the A Link to the Past design. These guys are called the Bokonoxes. Boko kind of generally referring to smaller blend creatures, because this guy is a lot smaller than the uh, the normal Hinoxes. So there is the Bokonox. And the kind of backstory is that they are a crossbreed between the normal Hinoxes and the, um, what are they called? The the little Boko Blin creatures from Breath of the Wild, which is why they got one eye like a Hinox. So what these guys can do, they are they have super high HP, so they take a really long time to kill. They're incredibly slow. They don't have very good armor values though, so um they can they take a lot of damage despite the fact that they have a lot of HP. And also when abilities are added into the game they will be able to fall asleep and very rapidly regenerate their HP. Right now they just kind of have a passive um, hit point regeneration. But yeah, down the road it'll be an ability where you, you click on it and then they kind of fall asleep. You'll hear them snoring and whatnot and then their HP will just kind of regenerate super rapidly. Um, but obviously they're really vulnerable to to being attacked when they're asleep. But yeah, for now they're just a really, really uh, high damage. They're they're a damage sponge right now, basically. Um, even when we get the abilities added in, they'll still basically be damage sponges. So you'll want a few of them at the front of your armies to soak up as much damage from the enemy as they can. So that is the Bokonox. Um, the second Moblin hero is King Boblin. <laughs> who is probably my favorite uh, Moblin hero. Um, I actually think, as a character, he's actually pretty underrated. He's a really, really... Um, what's the word I want to use to describe him? He's... Um, I don't know. He's, he's one of my favorite villains from the Zelda series, and I think he's incredibly underrated, considering how awesome he kind of is in Twilight Princess. I mean, he falls off a bridge twice... <laughs> and survives both times. Um, the entire the entire battle with him and his little army in Twilight Princess is really awesome. It just it's pretty it's pretty great how him and all of the the Bulblins just 
unlike some of the the other antagonists and enemies and other Zelda games, they're like trying everything they possibly can to bring down Link, and it's just this really hectic fight where basically everyone in the fight is really competent, and I really appreciate that about him and the uh, the bug blun the bug blends in general. But um, sorry, not bug blends, the bull blends. Getting really confused because there's so many blends. <laughs> but anyway. Back to this game. Um, he is obviously mounted on the giant Lord Bulblow, so he deals tons of knockback damage. He's really good as a siege unit too. He can bring down walls and buildings with, uh, I guess, by himself. He's he's a pretty good anti-building uh, unit, and he can attack normal units with his axe too. So. He's a pretty good um, all-around cavalry hero. The only thing that's good against him is um, spears, like uh, mo like as is bleh, as is the case with most cavalry. So you want to keep him away from spearmen. Yeah. He's actually pretty fast for uh, how big he is too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. King Bulblin's unit is the Bulblow War Ram, which is a heavily armored boar. It's it, you can use it against normal units, and it's got knockback, so it'll send units flying around, but its main purpose is a siege unit. It's basically a really fast battering ram. I mean, it's not super fast, but it moves a lot faster than um, most of the normal battering rams. So a few of these guys can um, close the distance on turrets pretty fast and just knock them down with their melee attack. So that's kind of the intent of them. They're more specifically an anti-turret than an anti-building kind of um, siege unit. And also as a melee siege unit they can you know attack enemies so they're not completely defenseless like most battering rams. So yeah that is the uh, the bull blow war ram. Pretty cool little siege unit. And then the third hero for the moblins is Ogalon who is actually not a canonical character um she's as far as i know anyway she's only appeared in hyrule conquest and the older version of hyrule total war she's basically um ganon's right hand general she helped him accomplish all of his plans and lead his armies before he was eventually killed by princess zelda and she's the smallest of the uh the four moblin heroes so as just a hero herself she's not nearly as powerful as these three, although she's pretty strong compared to heroes of most other factions. Like, um, she could probably go toe to toe with Link and do a lot of damage, um, but obviously she would probably die if she fought Ganon or even the, the Dark Knight heroes over here. So, her hero unit, however, is a really, really, really useful unit. It is called the Lionel Blin. <laughs> It is a crossbreed of the Lynels that are from Breath of the Wild and Moblins. So it's the centaur creature that has a lot of the features of the Lynels, but if you look closely enough, it's got the Moblin faces. And the male ones have the horns. This one is one of the female ones, so it doesn't have the, the big curved horns. But anyway, the... The Lionel Blin is a very, very fast cavalry unit that is good against other cavalry, so it's pretty fast too. Um, I mean, the Moblins aren't particularly slow, even though they have a lot of slow units, but I think it's actually the fastest unit in the, uh, the Moblin army. So if you're fighting an enemy that's sending lots of horses at you, or just cavalry units in general, um, training these guys will... They'll, 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 they'll make short work of the cavalry. And they're pretty fast, so they're good against infantry too, even though they don't have a damage bonus against them. So yeah, that is the Lionel Blin. It is a pretty cool cavalry unit. The fourth hero in the Moblin's arsenal is Lord Girim. <laughs> if um, you've been following the development for a while, he was actually originally the Moblin Titan. Um, I, I kind of... I had a... Uh, again, if you've been on the Discord, you could follow the debate I had with myself, because this guy really should be the Moblin Titan. But um, 
Fee is the titan for the Kingdom of Hyrule, and if you know anything about Ghirahim and my canon, he is significantly more powerful than Fee, so I kind of had a bit of a crisis trying to justify making him only a hero because Fee is a titan, so naturally he, he'd be weaker than her. So to get around that, he is a hero, but when we add abilities into the game, he will actually be able to temporarily transform into a second Titan unit. So the Moblins will have two Titan units, although he won't be able to permanently become a Titan. It'll kind of be like a limited time only thing. So yeah, that'll be one of his abilities when we get abilities added in. But in the meantime, he is just a hero unit. He's a really powerful hero unit. He can hover around and he deals lots of splash damage because he's able to use all the various swords against groups of enemies. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that in just a second after I show his unit, which is the Demon Blight Moblin. These big, awesome, smoky guys with the huge horns. Their design is based off of the design for Ganon and Ocarina of Time. They got the big, huge Moblin horns, although they have a lot of elements of their Titan because it's actually kind of related to their Titan. Um, and you could probably guess who the Titan is, but uh, the reason they're Gearhim's unit is because he is also directly linked to the Titan, but I'll go into more of those details when I get to the Moblin Titan. But in the meantime, the Demon Blight is this really, really awesome, huge infantry unit with this huge sword. It deals tons of knockback damage. Um, its main ability is that when you kill it, the corpse will actually stay behind. It's actually kind of like one of the Dark Knight units that I showed in the last video. His corpse will stay behind, and the corpse will slowly regenerate health. So the enemy has to destroy the corpse and if they don't it'll resurrect itself with full health and come back to life so that is kind of the the, the ability of these guys is um, and when they're killed there's a chance that they'll come back to life assuming you can protect the corpse from destruction too but uh, anyway I'll go ahead and show <laughs> him and gear him fighting off these Gerudo over here because it's pretty cool uh, especially gear him I if you, if you again, if you know, um, if you know about me, I kind of really hate Gearhim's character in canon, but I kind of redesigned him, and I think I kind of like the changes I made to him. Although I don't think he's that much different um, in terms of his personality. His appearance is a little bit different. But anyway, let's go ahead and shut up and let these guys fight off these brutes here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love that Exodarian got knocked back into the engine. It's made so many units just that much better. <laughs> These Garuda are actually pretty tough. Oh, they actually managed to kill the Demon Boy. Its corpse is gonna stay there and it'll come back to life if, uh, if it lasts long enough. <laughs> Gearham, on the other hand, is barely taking any damage from these guys. Yeah, these Gerudo are really tough. I actually think it's probably because these are the, the combat dummy variations that I made. All right, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, gear him and his unit tearing apart a bunch of Gerudo. Yeah, he barely took any damage at all. Uh, I'll come back and take a look at the corpse later and see if he's come back to life. But anyway, that is the four Moblin heroes and the units associated with their four heroes. Um, as usual, I'll save the Titan for last. So I will talk about the Darknet heroes and their units now. 
Um, there actually are no canonical Darknet characters from this. Well, there there is one who's this guy right here, but he actually doesn't have an official name. Um, he's a character from Minish Cap. Um, I guess I'll, I'll use the word character loosely because, again, he doesn't actually have a name, only a title. But uh, anyway, so the other three Darknet characters are technically original creations for Hyrule Conquest. So there, if you don't know anything about if you don't know anything about Zelda, um, Zelda fans are probably as much in the dark as you because these are not from the actual Nintendo games. But anyway, the first Darknet hero <laughs> who has a great laugh is uh, Zalinvar. He is the god of the Darknets, at least the current god. The kind of um, culture of the dark nuts is they kind of have a system of hero worship where basically the the coolest warrior who has the most kills or like the most skill or just the most powerful dark nut is the de facto god of their people so this guy he got a lot of powers from their titan he cheated his way to the top and he's kind of held uh he's held rulership over the dark nuts for a pretty long time so he's kind of their supreme god on earth, so to speak. And he's pretty cool. Um, he's very slow, like most of the Dark Nuts. Um, he deals tons of knockback damage. He's got really good armor. And he has actually got a pretty cool uh, pretty cool hero unit, which I guess I'll get into now. Kind of like how Girahim is directly linked to the, uh, the Titan for um, the Moblins. Same thing with his unit. Same thing with Zalanbar and his unit. His little unit is called the Patra. It is this little flying bat-like creature. Its design is actually based off of the Keys from Breath of the Wild, which is why it's got the one eye. I felt it looked very, very similar to their Titan, so I kind of was like, oh, instead of Keys, I'll, I'll make it the Patra, which if you know anything about the Patra, it's also a one-eyed bat-like creature from some of the older Zelda games. But anyway, the Patra is a small flying unit. It is a pretty decent scout unit. Um, it deals a little bit of damage, so it's not the best combat unit, but pretty big swarms of them can tear apart infantry. But the use of this unit, um, the main use of this unit is once we add stealth into the game, they will actually be completely invisible when they are standing, I guess flying still. When they're not moving around or attacking, enemies will not be able to see them, so they're really, really sneaky units. And the Dark Nuts have no stealth or sneaky units of any kind, so if you pick Zalambar, these guys are really, really useful. And if your enemy's not scouting, um, they'll completely catch enemies off guard, because most players will be expecting a very, very slow army of huge warriors and not a giant swarm of bats that are just appearing out of thin air. So yeah, that is the uh, that is the Patra. <laughs> like their little floppy animations when they're flying. So yeah, anyway, the second Darknet hero is Eroxanol, <sighs> who is this crazy lady here. She was actually once a sage of Hyrule. She preceded Naboru, and then eventually she named Naboru her successor. Mm. Um, before Zalanbar became the de facto deity of the uh, the Darknet, she was kind of their goddess, sort of. And then um, him and the Titan came along and dealt with her, and then Zalanbar took over. But yeah, she used to be a sage. She still had some sage. Her, blah, blah. She still has some of her sage powers left. So um, when we add abilities into the engine, she'll be able to summon little tornadoes and stuff like that. <sighs> But at the moment, she's kind of just this um, fast attack hero that can deal knockback damage to multiple enemies. And she actually has a really cool hero unit, which I guess I will show now. Ha! So Euroxanol's hero unit is called the Glass Witch. They are basically kind of like these... They're not really outcasts, but they're, they're kind of like these... Uh, how would I describe them? They, they live kind of on the fringes of Darknet society, and they make a bunch of cool jewelry and stuff that they sell, but in order to fight off, you know, thieves and enemies and stuff, they carry around these jugs of glass, 
and they basically throw tons of shards of glass into um, their enemies, which is probably the most evil thing you can do to someone you hate. <laughs> do not throw glass at them. It really sucks. Um, but kind of the use of this unit is they stun enemies that they hit with their ranged attack, which I will go ahead and demonstrate here. <laughs> So yeah, this, this unit will throw a bunch of shards of glass at this Gerudo here, and then uh, every time it hits, it'll stun them for a few seconds. So a pretty big army of these can do a lot. They can kind of halt an enemy army if they're able to keep hitting them with their ranged attacks. It's there. See, it stuns the, the Gerudo. Although I noticed some blood appearing there. I need to fix that. And that Gerudo managed to close the gap, so let's get this guy to come help her out. <laughs> I like his voices. <laughs> I just love the knockback, it's so great. Poor Gerudo. Wow, <laughs> knocked her up into the cliff there. Anyway, I'm gonna get everyone back in formation. Hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Alrighty, now that everyone joined in the fight. Um, that is the Glass Witch. A short range support unit that throws glass at enemies and stuns them in place. So, the third Dark Nut hero is technically the only sort of Dark Nut character from the actual Zelda series. Um, he is called the Black Knight, and he appeared in Minish Cap, although in Nephi Canon he's got the name Centuron. He's basically the husband of Yeroxanal, and he's kind of this dark nut that went around digging up, you know, the dungeons of Hyrule, finding, finding all these relics and stuff, and bringing a bunch of wealth and whatnot back to, uh, back to the Darknet people to fuel their war efforts. And he is a very, very heavily armored guy. He's very slow. He deals lots of damage, deals knockback, like most of the Darknet stuff. And he is a lot like the hero unit, which I showed in the last video. Um, his hero unit is called the Legatus. They are kind of like these really experienced Darknet warriors from... Um, the distant past that they can call upon to help them in their modern battles. And I'll show it again, like in the previous video, um, the ability of these guys is whenever they get killed, instead of dying, little chunks of their armor will fall off. So you have to kill these guys multiple times in order to permanently kill them. Um, even better, if you're playing as the Dark Nuts, when the armor falls off, the little option will show up here that lets you repair their armor. So if you have enough resources and you're micromanaging them carefully enough, you can basically keep these guys alive by constantly repairing their armor instead of them dying and replacing them. So they're very, very hard to kill unless you're just focusing all of your firepower on them. So I'll go ahead and manually kill him several times to break off his armor. And also, every time um, his armor breaks off, his movement speed increases too, so... His armor value and his HP goes down, but he still does the same amount of damage, and he's even faster. So his attack damage, or his, um, his DPS basically goes up every time he loses parts of his armor. So this is a really, really good unit. Um, it's probably my favorite unit in the Darknet roster, just because it's such a cool idea. And um, if you're not familiar with the design, it is based on one of the designs for Dark Nuts from Twilight Princess, which is also my favorite design in the entire series for these guys. And I'll go ahead and repair his armor. Um, obviously, I have instant build on, so when you're playing the game, the armor doesn't just instantly you know, pop up on him. It actually takes time to repair the armor, so even if he's still in combat, if they manage to break his armor further, it'll actually cancel out um, the repairs and you'll have wasted resources. So they're not super overpowered. Um, I would recommend keeping them out of combat while you're repairing their armor, but it, it's still a really, really cool option anyway. So yeah, that is the Legatus. That is the Black Knight's unique unit. 
Last up is the fourth Darknet hero, and this guy was actually created by one of my patrons from about two years ago, and I thought he was a really, really great idea, and he really complements kind of the, the weaknesses for most of the Darknet roster, and his name is Alros. Uh, hey. He is kind of like an outcast Darknet. He didn't, I guess, I guess the best way to describe it is he didn't like wearing heavy armor. So he kind of broke their kind of honor code and he fled into the desert and he built up kind of an army of mercenaries. So I kind of I kind of want to call him like the prince of mercenaries. Uh. But yeah, he's um he's a pr he's not super fast, but he's way faster than the other three darknet heroes and he's faster than most darknet units. And he's got these two swords here kind of like uh Urox and all. So he deals knockback damage to everything in front of him. And he can also uh, climb up cliffs too. Once we get more animations into the game, they'll have like a climbing animation for when they go up cliffs. Same thing with the the Ordonian goats. But anyway, uh. his unique unit is called the Reaver, who are these guys here. They're kind of like him, where they don't have heavy armor, they're um, unarmored, they're pretty fast for a Darknet unit. They're still a little bit slow because they're so big, but they're they're faster than most of the other Dark Knight units. And like him, they can also ah! climb up cliffs. Ah! Um, another advantage of these guys is they're actually classified as a mercenary. So any technologies you research that affect mercenaries will also affect these guys. And because they're mercenaries, they only cost rupees to train. So that's pretty cool. Ah! So yeah, that is... Alros and his unique unit, the Reaver. And I believe that is it for the Moblin heroes, the Dark Knight heroes and their units. So it is time to go on to the Titans. And these two are some of the coolest Titans in the game right now. Um, I will start with the Moblin one, who if you do not recognize is Demise. Technically, his proper name is Bringer of Demise because that is actually what he's called in the Japanese version. His kind of name in Nephi canon, the name that the Moblins give him is Ukblinro, which basically means Blend God in their language, but he is a very slow, super powerful melee titan that deals tons of knockback damage. And any unit that attacks him in melee will take damage when they attack him. So if he just stood still and didn't attack anything and all of the enemies around him were, you know, attacking him with their weapons, they would slowly take damage for every hit that they dealt against him. So that's kind of one of his abilities. And also um, when we add in um, abilities and stuff down the road, he'll be able to temporarily transform into the giant worm creature from Skyward Sword. So he'll basically become a super titan for, I don't know what the time will be, probably uh, 60 seconds, but we'll, we'll worry about that when we get to abilities. But for now, he's just a really, really cool melee titan. Actually, I actually have a video um, up on YouTube where the very first time I tried out Knockback, I actually tested it out with him against tons of Hylian Knights. But I guess I'll go ahead and show him uh, wiping out all these Gerudo. Cause it's just so cool, all the knockback stuff. I, I've thanked you a bunch of times already, Exo, but I can't thank you enough for some of the stuff you've managed to get in this mod. I think knockback is my favorite thing you've done so far. <laughs> yeah, I'll have him walk past these ones and just get into the group and attack them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> They're barely doing any damage to him. Alright, there we go. <laughs> That's so awesome. Just all the crew to go flying everywhere. <laughs> That's so cool. I, just, I love I love that. It's impressive that um, some of them are surviving. I mean, they have almost no health left, but that's still pretty great.
<laughs> so yeah, that is Demise. Um, I'm not a particular fan of the actual character, but I, I do like his design, although I did make some tweaks to him. I actually gave him this cape, but I don't know. He's actually one of my favorite Titans. I just, I love seeing him just fling hundreds of guys around and just wipe them out. Um, the best way to deal with him is to throw mages at him. Um, kind of like with Darknet units, anything that is resistant to knockback will be useful against him, although um, he's so powerful that he'll probably wipe out cavalry that go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him also. So yeah, mages are your best bet against him. Um, siege weapons like uh, catapults and trebuchets will be good against him. That's actually the case with most of the titans. Um, siege, siege weapons are good against most of them, except for some of the smaller ones like Fee. But uh, yeah, that is Demise. One of my favorite titans in the game right now. But now, anyway, the Darknet Titan, who I like more than Demise, and I actually like more than most of the titans, is um, Vadi. From, uh, he's from Four Swords and Four Sword Adventures. He's from Minish Cap. I'm pretty sure those are the only three games he's from. Um, doesn't seem like much, but other than uh, Ganon, he's actually made more appearances than any other villain in um, the canon series. I actually think... Um, um, Let's let me count one, two. No, I actually think he's appeared as many times as um, the Gerudo Ganondorf. So, yeah, he's kind of like the uh, the runner up for main Zelda villain. I'm actually kind of sad he hasn't shown up, and I think it's been like 15 years since the last game he was in. But anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Vadi, the Wind Demon, he is the Darknet Titan, and unlike the Darknuts, he is fast, he is flying, and he is a ranged unit, and he deals magic damage. Specifically, he summons little tornadoes that flow everyone around, throw everyone around, which I will go ahead and demonstrate. A cool thing about the tornado attack that he has is the tornadoes will keep moving around for about 10 seconds, and they'll keep doing damage to enemies. And even better, um, the little tornadoes he summoned, they, they slow down enemy units that are near them because of all the winds that they're generating. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and show it. I'll have him attack all these Gerudo I put up here. <laughs> He's so cool. I really like Vadi. I think he's he's got one of the cooler designs. For... So yeah, as you can see, it summons this tornado here that just keeps wandering around. Although it went in the complete opposite direction that I wanted it to. And see all the Garuda that are near it are moving very slow because of all the, the wind that it creates. Yeah, they're moving really slow. I actually think the the radius might be a bit too far because those ones are pretty far away and they're moving pretty slow. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> I like this little laugh there. Oh, another thing about Vadi, um, since he's an air unit, mm, ground units and melee units cannot attack him. You can only attack him with ranged units. Um, likewise, the best thing to use against him is archers. Um, actually, if I remember right, no, he actually doesn't ha oh no, he's got magic resistance. So yeah, he's actually resistant to mages, so just plain old uh, archers are your best bet against him. Just, if you're playing as the Hylians, make tons and tons of crossbowmen or light arrow archers, or not even light arrow archers, just the crossbowmen, and just bombard him with arrows. Because um, their light arrow archers actually deal a magic damage, which he shrugs off some of that. So, so yeah, crossbowmen will be good against him. Just normal archers, any um, non-magic ranged unit. Siege weapons will be good against him. But um, yeah, melee units can't deal any damage to him because he's up in the air. So that's pretty cool. Although I might make it so um, really, really huge melee units can damage him like other titans. Like Demise might be able to just whack him with his giant sword. <laughs> that's so great. I love the little tornadoes. So yeah, that's, that's Vadi. 
Um, I'm tempted to say he's my favorite Titan, but I might have a few more that I like more than him. I'm not sure yet. I haven't really decided. <laughs> I do love his attack, though. Summoning the little tornadoes that wander around. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I think... I think, um... I think that's it for the... The heroes and the titans. Love his crazy voice. Let him finish off that one Gerudo before I end the video. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Anyway... Yeah, that was um, the heroes for the Moblins and the Darknuts, as well as their awesome Titans. Um, hopefully you guys like the choices and the units that their heroes get. Hopefully you guys like the Titans. I mean, I personally think they're two of the coolest Titans in the game right now. I think the only one that is a little cooler is probably the Goma Titan. And I actually really like Fee, but uh, but other other than those, these two are probably the, the coolest Titans. <laughs> He's still going after these Gerudo. <laughs> the little camel got flung in the air by the tornado. Uh, I, I actually didn't have any um, flailing animations for the camel, so he was just like twitching up in the air. That was really funny. Actually, I think that's a zero AD camel, which is why it doesn't have any flailing animations. I need to replace those with my camels. Anyway. Anyway, that was um that was the Darknut and Moblin Heroes and Titans. Hopefully you guys like them and stay tuned for my next video which will be all about uh, mercenaries. Anyway, hope you guys have a good one.